We are back with a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a Miami Heat draft preview. Um, assuming they keep the 27th overall pick, we do have to go through some of the top 10 prospects that I would like the Heat to select if they were available at 27. So we're going to go through that list, man. I created a top 10 by myself. Kind of a mini scouting report on each of these 10 guys with their stats, pair comparisons, age, height, weight, college, position, etc. So, um, yeah, without further ado, man, leave a like, subscribe, comment down below. Um, really appreciate the support over the past couple of uh, videos. As soon as the off season has started, you guys have been killing the videos. Um, so I really appreciate the support. Um, I've been seeing all the comments as well. You guys have really interacted uh, with each other in the comment section below. Like a very intriguing some of the conversations you guys have been having, even like with each other in the comment section below. So keep up the um, interaction, man. I, I do want to build a community out here. Get to 2,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Let's get right into it. So um we have at number one uh, well this is not really like a ranking but i just created a uh, a top 10 list um not really in order though like i like like i said before not not really a ranking but um the first player we have is ej liddell now ej liddell is a guy out of ohio state uh university he's a power forward um, who is approximately 21 and a half years old height is about six seven weights about 243 and he averaged uh, about 19 19 points per game eight rebounds and uh two and a half assists and um he was pretty efficient from the field 49 percent 37 percent from three and 77 percent from the free throw line now ej liddell is a guy who's projected to go in the um late teens or early 20s i doubt he's going to be here at 27 so if this is a guy that the heat really really want they probably would have to trade up for this pick um, but I'm a huge fan of EJ Liddell and there's a reason I put him at number one is because he's probably my most ideal player that I would want for the Heat to select someone of his player profile. Um, he is a power forward and I think the Heat need to fill that front court position next to Bam um, that the void there because like I said in the last video where I talked about whether the Heat need a center to play alongside Bam or not. I didn't mention that you know bam's front court partner has been kind of shifting throughout these last couple of seasons you know he's had about six or seven front court partners and not really you know any of them has stayed consistently next to him you know in the front court and ej liddell is a guy who can be a replacement for a pj tucker like i said the comparison right here pj tucker i think is a good comparison he's a swiss army knife power forward he's willing to do the dirty work he has a very high motor he can shoot the three ball um, you can defend multiple positions, switch onto multiple positions. PJ Tucker, Paul Millsap, Grant Williams, all these guys are players like are guys that uh, a lot of teams could have or would want to have on you know playoff pushing uh, slash championship contending teams. PJ Tucker is a championship uh, winner. Grant Williams is in the finals right now. Paul Millsap, although did not make the finals, was a part of you know one of the uh, of the 61 Hawks teams. And, and carved out a very good career for himself so um i love ej liddell's game it would be a blessing if he was available at 27 i doubt he's going to be there but if this is a guy that the heat want you know i would you know he would be a guy that i would be willing to trade up to get because he's that good and would fit this well with the heat uh culture and their 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 needs in my opinion at number two we got Jaden hardy now Jaden hardy did not go to college um he instead took the g league route played for the g league ignite along with another prospect that we're going to be talking about on, on uh, later down the line on this list. Um, he's a two guard. Uh, he, he's 20 years old. Um, and this is a guy that was actually projected to be a top five prospect before the season even started. And uh, due to some uh, problems with his um, efficiency and stuff like that, he fell down on the draft boards. But he is projected to, uh, you know, go in that 27, uh, 20, like in that 20 range. So between 20 and 30, he's projected to go somewhere in that range. Um, he he weighs about 198 and he stands about six foot um six foot four and he averaged 17.7 4.6 and 3.2 uh was where, where his uh stats uh set obviously 18 points per game five rebounds three assists are, are good stats but the the reason that he fell very low in the draft boards is because of his uh shooting splits and his efficiency you know 35 percent from the field and 27 percent for three are uh pretty much atrocious shooting splits and um but the reason he's so high on this uh, on this board for me is because i'm a huge fan of his game i think that there's a lot of guys that you can look at their shooting splits and say oh these guys are not going to be good at the the next level but a guy like cam thomas who I, who I compared him to with this floor. I think that Cam Thomas was in a similar position and Cam Thomas hit a hit a hit a really really good rookie season last year uh for the Brooklyn Nets. I thought he was um one of the top 
15 rookies last season. I thought he was a really good uh, pick for them. He fell all the way down to 27. I think I think 27 was when, where, where the Brooklyn Nets pick last season too. And they got Cam Thomas with the exact same pick. And I think Cam Thomas and Jaden Hardy are very similar. Although I think Jaden Hardy has a higher ceiling because he was projected to be such a high pick, which is why I said his ceiling could be like Bradley Beal. But his floor of Cam Thomas is a really good floor. I think the Heat really desperately need to address half-court offense. I think this guy comes in from day one, and he's a bucket, man. He's he's one of the best scorers in the draft from day one. He'll come up and just light things up. And, um, yeah, he's going to be a really electrifying scorer. And uh, whoever gets him, I think the Heat can develop him really nicely, fix those efficiency issues. Um, and, yeah, a lot of people get, you know, um, look at percentages and, and, and they shy away from a player. But this guy's talent level is off the charts. So this is why he's on my list. Um, the Heat should definitely consider picking him at 27 if they keep their pick. Number three, we got Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara. This guy has been a riser, but I, I've been a fan of this guy for so long, man. I, I've, I've really been surprised that he, he has not risen until now. Like, until, like, the combine, no one was really talking about this dude. But I think before I saw his workout... Uh, with I don't know Mike Schmitz or something like that was when I was a huge fan of this guy like the the reason I'm a fan of uh, guys like this is because he plays at his own pace nothing really speeds him up he's a he's an initiator at the wing position like he's a he's a point guard in a small forwards body in my opinion and um, he has a herky-jerky play style which is why I kind of compared him to Shea and Cade Cunningham obviously not on their level uh, because Shea and Cade were lottery picks but I think this guy could also become a lottery pick if a team tries to you know um, take a take a shot at him but Cade Cunningham was the best player in the draft uh, last season so obviously I'm not comparing him to that type of level but as far as play style I would say like kind of those two Shea and Cade um, height you know he's about six five uh, and three quarters at 209 pounds um, his stats were pretty nice as well uh, 18 uh, 4.4 rebounds and 4.2 assists splits were not bad 51 percent from the field 40 percent from three and 81 percent from the free throw line um i think people didn't really project him to go too high earlier was because of his athleticism issues and he's not really the fastest player but um he, he gets the job done man he just plays at his own pace and nothing really speeds this guy up which is why i'm a huge fan of him underrated playmaker as well so i would love jalen williams on the heat like i would absolutely love jalen williams on the heat so um if he's available which i doubt he will be because because I think he, since he's rising so much, a team would take him. Like I have, I had him going to the Nuggets in my mock draft on on my second channel. Um, I think a team like that could take him if they wanted to. So um, I, I doubt he's going to be there. But again, like EJ Liddell, um, I would really uh, wish if the Heat could consider trading up for this guy because I think he's the real deal. Um, next, we got Kennedy Chandler. Now Kennedy Chandler is a point guard out of Tennessee, uh, 19.8 years old, almost 20. Uh, pretty undersized for a PG, uh, six foot and a half tall, 172 point, uh, pounds. Average 13.9 points, 3.2 assists, uh, 3.2 rebounds and 4.7 assists on 46, 30, uh, 38 and 61% shooting splits. I compared him to like Kyra Lewis uh, with his speed, but he also has like the floor general type headiness of Tyus Jones in my opinion. I think he can run an offense like Tyus Jones did, uh, showed some fl uh, flashes of in that Grizzly series when, when Ja was out. Um, and I do think that um, he has a very high floor. I think that he can be a, become a you know floor general type of guy from day one. The reason I put this guy on this list is because I think with Kyle Lowry's you know age, you know he's getting older. The Heat don't really have a backup point guard who's who's a floor general. I think Gabe Vinton is more of a scoring guard than 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 he is a playmaker. I think Kennedy Chandler is a true playmaker. He's a true PG, very good defensively. I think he, his defense gets overlooked because of his size, but. He's a pest defensively, man. Um, he has some DeJounte Murray defensive type vibes. He's one of my favorites in this draft. Um, and, and I think he definitely has a chance to be available at 27. So, um, yeah, I mean, if he's available and if the Heat want to take a point guard and go point guard for their route, they haven't selected a point guard in the draft in I don't know how long. But, um, yeah, if they do want to go with a point guard, then, you know, Kennedy Chandler is a guy that I would highly suggest because I think he's the best point guard that you can find at 27 uh, because Tata Washington will be gone. And then I think he's the second best PG after Tata, um, you know, who's available. So, yeah, Kennedy Chandler is going to be one of my players on the board. 
Marjan Bochamp is at number five. I'm pretty sure. I think this is the fifth one. Yeah, Marjan Bochamp, another guy. This is the uh, the, the second guy who played uh, on the G League Ignite with Jaden Hardy. Did not play. Did not go to college. Uh, Seattle kid, man. Seattle has hoopers. Seattle definitely has hoopers. So shout out to Seattle hoopers, man. The, these guys are the real deal. Bring back the Sonics. Um, but he's a wing, shooting guard slash small, small forward. Uh, about almost 22 years old, so he's pretty much NBA ready. Um, six six and a half tall but 197 pounds but he is very athletic he's an athletic freak um he can defend multiple positions which is why i have guys like mikhail bridges gary payton the second kelly Oubre. uh these guys can defend uh and he is a defensive monster man he can he can run in transition as well very athletic the sh the the three-point shot is not really there yet uh, which is why i think mikhail bridges is like a best case scenario for him because now we see mikhail bridges three-point shot is very very high but um you know, early on with Marjan Bochamp, he's not going to come in to be a shooter. Uh, that's going to be something he has to develop. You know, he's shown some flashes of shooting in the combine, but, you know, we'll have to see if that can, you know, translate to the NBA uh, level. He averaged 15.1 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 2.3 assists. Very good rebounder for his size, man. Um, extremely high ath athlete, ath athletic level for him. Uh, but his shooting splits, apart from his three-point shooting and free throw shooting, his field goal percentage was really, really nice, 57%. But he only shot 24% from three and 65% from the free throw line. Like I said, the shot is going to be something he has to work on um, in order for him to you know, complete his game out. But apart from his shooting, I think he basically has everything else that he needs at the NBA level. High motor. Fits the Heat culture to, to a T um, and, and definitely will play hard on both ends of the floor. So he he is my number five. Uh, he is at number five for my prospect uh, list. At number six, we got Bryce McGowans. Now, Bryce McGowans is another guy like Jaden Hardy, who's a scoring first guard, combo guard. Um, a lot of comparisons uh, to Zach Levine's game style. Obviously, you know, not on that level yet, but he could get there if he works hard on his game. Um, He's about 19 and a half, 19.6 years old, went to Nebraska in the Big Ten, um, weighs about 181 pounds and measures about six, six and a half um, tall. And he averaged about 17 points per game, five rebounds and one assist. Shooting splits, again, not that great. But, you know, like Jaden Hardy, you can't really judge a guy off of splits, especially if they were the you know, if they were the only offense on the team, Bryce McGowan's was really, you know, he didn't really have that many weapons on his team at Nebraska. So he really took a lot of the shots there. Uh, but he he is a very talented scorer, man. He's a, he's a um, big scorer, like as far as uh, tight. So he can shoot over people if he wants to. Uh, but yeah, Zach Levine, I think is a good comp for him as far as play style. Um, again, not as athletic, but as far as fluidity and scoring, he said he looks up to Zach Levine and Devin Booker. I can see some of those tendencies with him. You know, not as good, a, good of a playmaker as D Book um, and not as athletic as Zach Levine. But as far as scoring the ball, um, he's a three level scorer for sure. Um, so, yeah, uh, Bryce McGowan is uh, number six on the list. At number seven, we got Patrick Baldwin Jr. Now, this guy's draft is draft stock has fallen as well um, because of his year at Milwaukee. He's a he's a small forward slash power forward. Um, again, like bright like Bryce McGowan, he's 19 and a half, basically 19.6 years old. Um, his height is very, very good, though, for his position, you know, for his play style. He's 6'10 and a half or 6'10 and a quarter. Uh, weighing about 231 pounds and he averaged about 12 um, 6 and 2 on 34 uh, 27 74 splits like i said the splits are not great and a lot of people are going to look at the splits and say oh this guy can't hoop but he he's a bucket man he, he just i think he made the wrong decision i respect his decision because his dad coached at milwaukee but i think he should have made a better decision for him because i don't really like you know how he was used in milwaukee uh, but hey, I'm not I'm not his dad, so I don't I probably don't know him as well as well as his dad does, obviously. But um, I just think that you know him going to Milwaukee really hindered his game. Uh, but yeah, shooting splits are not great at all. He's not efficient, but his game style and he himself said he reminds him he 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 watches a lot of Michael Porter Jr. film and. Um, he reminds me a lot of MPJ, a lot of MPJ with the size, with the skill set. He's, he can score at three levels at 6'10", man. Um, very good handle for his size as well. So MPJ, I think, is a good comparison for Patrick Baldwin Jr. He's another shot maker. You can put at that four if you need to. Not the best defensively, but I think with the heat, like the heat can kind of just turn guys defensively and hide them if the, if you need to. And he, and he has size. He's not like a weak player. So he's not like a Tyler Hero who just came into the league as a um, as a skinny, scrawny player. This guy has some size and some stock to him. So even if he's not the best defender, he does have uh, some size like a Struess. You know, Struess was not the best defender coming in, but him being a, a stockier guy allowed him to compete on that. And I think that's what you can get out of Patrick Baldwin Jr. if he's used right. So 
um he is another guy on the list i think the next guy is justin lewis one of my favorites as well um went to marquette you know pat riley loves his marquette guys man Dwayne wade he, he acquired jay crowder jimmy butler obviously is on the team so he has that marquette connection that the heat love um small forward power forward 20.2 years old um weighed in at 235 pounds and he measured about six six seven and a half averaged about 17.7 7, uh 17 points per game eight rebounds and two assists splits were all right 44 35 and 76 um he's one of the best 3 and D players in the draft in my opinion i don't know why his big board ranking is so low like he was like 47th or 48th on the big board i think he can be a first round pick of a team really values a guy like him i think he's going to be one of the steals of the draft for sure like not many people know about him because like i said on the big board and on the the on like the mock drafts he's not projected to go in the first round but i think that if a team looks at his potential and looks at his games gameplay and looks at his intangibles he's he's going to be a very good player um reminds me a lot of og ananobi deandre hunter like three and d prototypes in my opinion can switch can switch multiple positions and can uh score from the mid-range and from the three-point areas uh finishing at the rim is a little bit of a concern but i think if he uh, you know, spend some time with the Heat, especially with Jimmy Butler. He can he can learn some ropes as far as finishing at the rim. But um, as far as shooting the ball uh, from the mid range and from the three point line, I think he has it already. I think he already has it, at, and definitely he already has a defense in the motor. He went to Marquette, and you can't go to Marquette and not be a good defender. Like that's just not going to work out. So he's he's going to come into the league as a, as a good defender already, and that's what the Heat will love. So Justin Lewis is at number eight. At number nine, I believe we have Josh Minot. Yep, Josh Minot. A lot of people don't really know about this guy. Played at Memphis for Penny Hardaway, uh, power forward, 19 and a half years old, 19.6, uh, 6'8 and three quarters, and 197 pounds. Did not average that many points, rebounds, or assists because he didn't get too much playing time under Penny Hardaway. Um, and a lot of people thought he should have stayed another year at college, and I kind of agree, but since he did not go back to college i do think that he could be a guy that the heat look at um again talent wise i don't think he's a first round talent but when you look at his you know um player profile i think the heat kind of gravitate to guys like him a lot Derek jones jr is one of my biggest comparisons for him i think the heat would love a player with his athletics uh athleticism and with his defensive ability um and that's what you're going to get from him out of, out of day one he's going to be a, a excellent defender and he's going to be a um, high athlete but he's not going to be able to score the ball that well um, from the start. So he's going to be a project as far as scoring the ball is concerned. But defensively and as far as his athleticism, he has it already, man. Derrick Jones Jr. is a really good comparison. Even like Jeremy Grant coming out of Syracuse or like at OKC level. Um, obviously not Jeremy Grant with Detroit, but even before that, like Jeremy Grant came into the league very raw as well. So um, he's going to have to be polished up if he gets selected at 27 uh, is Josh Minot. But you know if he is there which i think he will be i don't think anyone's going to take him before 27 this is a good option for the heat at that power forward position so he's at number nine and then i think my last player is trevor keels uh trevor keels is a, a guard is a guard he's a guard from duke he's about 18.8 .8 to 19 years old um six four and three quarters 224 pounds um averaged about 12 3.4 and, and three assists on 42 31 and 67 percent from the free throw line um were, were his splits um his player comparisons are kind of like lou dort uh he reminds me a lot of lou dort and then maybe some marcus smart here and there because of his defensive intensity um he fits the heat culture to a team man he's a big body guard definitely gonna have to get that body fat under un, under control if he wants to play for the heat but he's a he's a, he's a stockier guard defensively i think he, he has really high upside there and then offensively as a guy who can be a, a lead guard I, I like him but i also like him as a combo guard too as well i think he has a lot of lou dort similarities there so definitely fits the heat culture the heat mode um and yeah he is my last player so um i mean yeah man i think all these 10 like are good options for the heat if you want to take a guy like that um and uh, like i said my favorite player to take right now is ej liddell but i don't think he's gonna fall but all these guys i would love on the heat i think the heat do you know have some work to do whether they want to keep their pick whether they want to trade their pick but if they do keep their 27th overall pick a lot of these 10 guys like i i didn't even mention like wendell moore who i would like or even like Jalen williams out of um who, not Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara, but Jalen Williams, the big. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, I, I would love any of these 10 guys uh, if, if, if they were available at 27. I think the Heat, you know, from Pat Riley's press conference, he said that, you know, um, you know, they probably will keep their pick unless there is a guy out there like a Donovan Mitchell. He didn't say Donovan Mitchell. This is me saying this, but unless there's a guy out there that, you know, they're 
willing to trade their pick for um obviously but if there is a star player out there you obviously probably would have to give the pick um in the trade but if you keep the pick a lot of these guys would be available and i would highly suggest the heat draft one of these guys at the 27th overall pick but yeah let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below um if you guys like any of these guys you know like i said did not mention guys like wendell moore or jalen williams but you know there's there i could only fit like 10 players man i don't want to come up with 20 players and this would be like a an hour video if i did that so i don't want to make this too long of a video but it's going to be like a 20 minute video um so yeah man we're going to wrap up the video there hopefully you guys enjoyed the video um i'll see y'all later as always man peace